morning. Today is hot. We're going to observe the heat protocol. I still will have a gathering song, one verse. There won't be any mass parts sung and we'll be out of here shortly. And we gather in song.
gather round this table, all you who are and near, gather round this table, for all are welcome here, yes, all are welcome here. Blessed are they who will feast in the reign of God, blessed are they who will share the bread of God. Blessed are they who are least in the reign of God. They shall rejoice at the feast of God. In the name of the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those who have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We pray this through Christ your Son, who reigns with you in the Spirit of God forever and ever. Amen. Now let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. All your works shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. 
if the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaims, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the learned and the clever, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal them. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. For my, take my yoke upon you for, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. But you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. The beginning of our second reading, taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, we hear these words, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. This is a favorite theme of Paul's that question of how do we live in our humanity, but also as spiritual beings, obedient to the Father as Jesus was. And St. Paul, even though some interpret it that way, is not putting the spirit against the flesh or the flesh against the spirit. Because that's not possible, because Jesus is both human and divine. So holiness isn't getting rid of one and embracing the other. For us as human beings living in this world, it's a way of living in the spirit with our humanity, in our humanity. Indeed, we become the tabernacles of God. And this is the work of the spirit within us. And so we have to have a healthy balance between the spirit and the flesh. And how might we understand that? Well, as children who were born into this world as infants, and without our even thinking about it, we design ways to meet our primary needs, which is for security and for love. There's a bit of control in that. And as infants, we need that to survive. But then as we grow, we become older children, we become clever. We even know how to manipulate mom and dad so that we can make sure our world is the way we want it, secure and, uh, and, and love, at least what we think is secure and what we think love is. 
uh, regardless of what, what other people may think, or even what God may think. And then clearly as adults, that doesn't work at all. Because what we try to do is manipulate other people for our happiness, and it becomes very important what they think of us and what we think of them. And it just becomes this endless tug of war between egos when our false self is in charge. So to take that, when we recognize that we have a huge emotional response to something, it's triggering something. And, it, you know, we've all had that experience. Well, why did I react to that so much? When that was actually trivial. And we might not think about that until later. Well, it's probably hitting on something in our history. Something that needs healing in us or even in other people. And so that's where we come to prayer. Will we come to the Lord who is beyond our consciousness, beyond our reason, and beyond our emotions, and in that wordless place in the ground of our being and centering in prayer, prayer, God works. He works on our unconscious. He works on our conscious so that we can grow in a spiritual consciousness beyond reason, beyond emotion. And that is what it means to live in the spirit. We're not denying the human but we're, if you will, putting the human at the service as a vessel of the divine and of the spirit. So it takes constant prayer, it takes constant discipline, and most of all, constant surrender of self. And that's why I think it's very important in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, thy will be done. And you know, some days that's, that's hard, and I find myself surrendering, having to surrender that. Because even when I pray for friends, I know what I want for them, and I think God should want the same thing, you know? And I pray hard. But then I have to surrender and say, no, whatever God plans and does is great. Because in the end, our flesh, our humanness will die. But our spirit will live on. And that's what all that matters, even now. And this is human experience that we embrace that reality and live out of that consciousness. Then, for us who love God, all things do work unto good. All things become blessed. And we begin to experience that on a wordless level. And there's no longer a we and a them. It's all a big we all one in God, so that in the end we can say with St. Paul, very really in an experience of our heart, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me, where I think what I do, what I love, is Christ living in me, because I I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we bring to the Lord our needs, the needs of all humanity. During this time of uncertainty, let us pray for all of us in the church who grow weary or frightened. Despite our faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. During this time of uncertainty, let us pray for those who must govern us and protect us, that we might be willing to trust their decisions on our behalf that we might be able to sacrifice self for others, that we might answer God's call to serve the good of all. We pray. Lord, you are heard. During this time of uncertainty, as we celebrate our independence from a former tyranny, let us pray that we might not ignore our interdependence and dependence on all those around us. We pray. Lord, you are prayer. Let us pray for those for whom we have promised to pray. For Aliyah Tobin. For those who have lost hope in the future, who cannot find any source of good news. For those who have become cynical, who are overwhelmed by negativism, doubt, or confusion. And we pray especially for Zenaida Luciano and Josephine Zeman on their journeys to the Creator. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died, for our loved ones who have gone before us, and for all who mourn the loss of someone dear to them. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For these prayers, and for the prayers, hopes, concerns, and fears that we each may hold in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, in your mercy, we ask you to bless us. We hear our needs and needs of all humanity, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which are just given human hands have made, and become for us our spiritual food and drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with this sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity, cleanse us from our sins. And pray, my friends, that this our offering may be found pleasing to God, our Almighty Creator. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty, salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us shares in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with past with joy, every land, every people exalts as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the new home, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you, for all, for the forgiveness of sin, and do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humble, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope Bernard, our Archbishop, and all who seek Heart. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. You see in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles, Joseph, her spouse, and the saints, and all who have pleased you through the ages, that we may come to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, O God, Almighty Creator, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. We share Christ. Peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. This is Christ in us. Happy are we who share the fullness of his Holy Spirit. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, 
deeply spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. My country skies are bluer than the ocean, and sunlight beams on clover leaf and on pine. But other lands have sunlight too, and clover. And skies are everywhere as blue as mine. So hear my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for their land. And for mine. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God who dwells in you bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the love and the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Please be, seated. be seated. You will be invited to communion now by, the, by Peg, our usher back there. Keep an eye on the back. We'll be going from the back to the front. This is my prayer, O oh God of all earth's kingdoms. Your kingdom come on earth, your will be done. Let Christ be lifted up till all shall serve him. And hearts united learn to live as one. So hear my prayer, O oh God of all the nations. Myself I give you, let your will be Teach us to sing, O oh God of all creation, a song of hope for ocean, sky, and pine. Teach us to walk the way that ends division till every land and nation love and wise then will all peoples see your glorious vision the world that we Beloved and divine. This is my song, O oh God of all the nations, a song of peace. 
for lands afar and for mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and as fine as mine.